I'm Christina Fiore, MedPage Today at the RSNA meeting in Chicago. Patients with stress-related psychiatric disorders may have difficulty suppressing traumatic memories. The culprit may be a dysfunctional prefrontal cortex. Researchers used functional MRI scans to measure activity in this region of the brain, along with activity in the hippocampus, which stores memories, as Dr. Nivedita Agarwal of the University of Udine explains here. The group uh, led by uh, Michael Anderson in the University of Oregon, he showed that there, are, there is a circuitry which helps us to forget or to suppress our memory. And he suggested that the prefrontal cortex, which is right there in the red, um, uh, red area, is activated and can suppress a part of the brain, which is called the hippocampus, which basically stores memory. That's where we have all our facts stored. It can suppress the hippocampus and, lead, and leads to memory suppression. And the task we use to understand memory is what we call a think-no-think -think task. All right, it's very simply called also Anderson's task. What they, are, what they are supposed to do in the first phase is to learn a pair of associated words. They go into the scanner and now they're advised to try to remember the associated word only if that appears in green. So if the monkey, the word monkey appears in green, they are asked to remember the associated word, which is banana, okay? If it appears in red, they have to use all strategies they could possibly employ to try to suppress the associated word. If we zoom in to the area of the brain we thought would be dysfunctional, which is the prefrontal cortex right here in the front of our brains, we find in red, during the retrieval phase, when subjects are asked to think, uh, healthy controls, they activate bilaterally, both uh, bilaterally the prefrontal cortex. Okay, there's a lot of red spots right there, which says it is a strong activation. Okay? Patients, on the other hand, yes, they do activate. You can see that tiny little spot, blue spot right there, but it's not as much as efficient as healthy controls, with the result that the hippocampus, which is where the memory is stored in patients, is activated. You can see the, right, the large red dot there. So the hippocampus is allowing the healthy controls to remember, to think of the associated word. With respect to patients, yes, there is some activation, but not, not as good as, that, as of the healthy controls. Suppression phase, well, once again, there's a very nice bilateral activation of the prefrontal cortex in healthy controls. But you know what? Patients, they have just a teeny little spot right there active. It's not really being able to activate that part of the brain to try not to think of the associated word anymore. And if you see the hippocampus, there's a lot of activation in the hippocampus of patients to say, to say that um, the associated word is coming back and back. They, they keep thinking of it, even if they're trying to not think about it. Dr. Agarwal said the findings have a number of clinical implications. If we know that the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is dysfunctional in patients, can we do something about it now? Well, there are a few studies, and actually there are some um, antidepressant treatments, like the transcranial magnetic stimulation, uh, stimulation which is right on the, on, on the bottom of the um, uh, of the slide, which has been around for about 20 years, and it has an antidepressant effect. It, it is able to activate neurons in the prefrontal cortex, so that has an efficient antidepressant effect. And the other very recent article I was looking through, the literature is going to be published next year. Um, antidepressant treatment drugs, they can actually activate, there has been, it has been shown that patients on anti antidepressants can increase brain activity right in the prefrontal cortex and they have a very good antidepressant effect. So we know that there is something wrong, there is something dysfunctional in these patients, we know that there might be treatment and in the future they might, these might be sort of the, uh, the way to go. So in addition to figuring out a possible neurological pathway for memory suppression, the researchers said their study shows that fMRI can be used to investigate other transient cognitive functions in smaller brain areas. I'm Christina Fiore, MedPage Today.